Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm Gemma, founder of You Say Tomato Cooking. You can find me on Instagram as Gemma C. Wade. And today I'm gonna to help you learn something new in your lunch break. I am gonna show you how to make one of my favorite recipes, which I've been teaching for years in my cooking classes, that has a really good way of showing you things that I think are really important for making all your cooking taste good. So I'm gonna make a chickpea, feta, lemon and herb salad. Don't panic if you haven't got any of those ingredients because as I go, I'm gonna to talk to you about substitutions. Um, but the reason I love this recipe is it's really quick to make, always good, hangs around in the fridge for ages. So it's great when you're all eating lunch at different times and you want to have something in the fridge you can dip in and out of. And it's also a really good lesson in balancing flavour, texture, temperature and layering flavours, which are all really useful things to get your head around if you're wanting to make your food more delicious. So what I'm gonna to do today is I am gonna get started with chopping an onion, which is where most good recipes start. And then I'm gonna take you through, you can do all of this in less than 15 minutes. Um, so should we get started? First things first, when you're chopping, you wanna make sure your board isn't gonna move around because if your board moves around, you're gonna have more chance of cutting yourself, which is probably gonna make you more nervous and therefore slower at cooking. So a little trick is if you get a bit of kitchen paper and wet it, and put it under your board, it'll stop your board from moving. And then you can use that paper to clean up afterwards. So that's the first little trick. Second thing, you really need a sharp knife. So if you haven't got a sharp knife, I really recommend getting one of these sort of knife sharpeners and just sharpening a knife every week because especially when you're cutting onions, if your knife isn't sharp, you'll squash them rather than cut them. So you won't be able to get a nice small dice. So, right, the onions. I'm gonna use red onions. You could use yellow onions if you wanted to. I'm going to apply my very attractive glasses. These are onion goggles, which stop me from crying. And when you're blonde like me, you have to wear a lot of mascara. So they're important. Um, right, first of all, I'm going to do my onions. So chop each end off. Chop. Get rid of that. Then I'm going to chop down through the middle. And that's going to help me get the skin off. Don't worry, I'm not going to wear these the whole way through. I know they're a bit off-putting. But so would be Alice Cooper makeup. So we're not going to have that either. So skin comes off. And I'm going to do a fine dice today. Um, the reason we want to do a fine dice is we want it really small so it cooks quickly. So you're going to put your onion on the board. I'm just going to bring it here so you can see. And then you want to kind of get down low and keep your knife parallel to the board and put this sort of fat bit of your hand on the onion. And then you're going to cut across about 90% of the way through. Can you see? In little slices. And the more slices you do, the smaller your pieces of onion will be. So I've done about three or four, it's quite a small onion. And then you want to pinch your onion between your fingers, use the point of your knife at that 90% mark, and then just cut down. Again, the closer together your slices are, the smaller your pieces of onion will be. And then the third cut, so we've gone across, along, is to put the point of your knife down and then just cut through. And you get loads of really nice little bits of onion. Now, this is also really handy if you're making, you know, a spaghetti bolognese or a chilli. Pretty much any recipe where you want to have chopped onion. And then you just chop through that last little bit as well. Now, I'm not going to do both bits because I'm conscious of time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a nice in a, a frying pan that I've already heated with a little bit of oil. Take those off. And let that cook. So, so I'm not moving my camera around too much. I'm using rapeseed oil, which is British, so it helps our British farmers. It's also really um, high in good fats and it's good at high temperatures, so it's great for roasting and frying at. So I'm gonna fry that with a pinch of salt, about five or six minutes. And while that cooks, I'm gonna get on with my other ingredients. So because my board's a bit oniony now, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna wipe my knife, because I hate the taste of raw onion. So to get other onion flavours into this salad, I'm gonna add some chives. Now, on the recipe on my website, it does actually say to use spring onions, but there weren't any when I went to the shops. And I don't wanna start going around to lots of different shops at the moment. So chives are gonna give another layer of onion flavour. So we've already got the cooked onions, which are gonna be nice and sweet. These are gonna be kind of a fresh onion flavour. So we're gonna put a knife down and just chop that kind of as fine as you can, but don't stress about it. If you're using spring onions, you want to choose, choose, you want to chop the green and the white bit. So that gets chopped into my bowl. 
then I am going to do some rather sad looking parsley. So this is a great recipe if you've got any weird greens in the fridge that need using up. So rocket, watercress, coriander, basil, parsley, any of those soft greens work really well. And if they are a bit sad, don't throw them away. We're gonna chop them really fine, so it's gonna be fine. I did dunk these in some ice water, but they are even a bit past that stage. So we're just gonna to have to deal with it. Um, so when I'm chopping, I've kind of made them into a bunch. All the sprout, all the stalks are on here as well. And I'm just gonna run my knife through it again, point of the knife on the board. And the bulk of the knife that's doing the work is this bit at the back rather than the point. The point is almost like an anchor, allowing the other bit to do its work. So chop all that. And if you think about it, I think in Britain, we are a bit apologetic in our use of herbs. We're getting better, but you know, the way that herbs are sold in the supermarket is so small, they don't really encourage us to use a lot of them. But if you've got a packet of herbs, throw the whole thing in. You don't want to waste them. So that goes in the bowl. I've also got some rocket, which I'm just going to rip up. So you've got nice different shapes and textures going on in here. And then the kind of thing that makes a salad really hearty is chickpeas, but you could use any canned beans for this, apart from baked beans. Or you could even, if you are that way inclined, if you've got dried beans, you could use those. Now, a little tip, if you have got chickpeas, don't throw the liquid away that it comes in because it's a really great um, ingredient. It's a bit like egg whites, you can use it to make meringues or you can use it in chocolate mousse or um, what else? Mayonnaise, lots of different things. So just drain that and you can freeze that or keep it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. It's called aquafaba. So if you're looking for any recipe, just look for aquafaba. So drain those, throw them in. So you can make this with more, be more chickpeas, less chickpeas, whatever you want. That's just one can. The next thing I'm gonna do is some feta. Now feta is going to add a really nice saltiness to this. We're going to have the sweetness of the cooked onions, we've got the freshness of the herbs, we've got the kind of earthiness of the chickpeas. The feta is going to bring a kind of creamy saltiness to it and also the temperature, it's nice and cold so it contrasts well. Um, I'm probably just going to use half of this block and then the other half just to keep it in the fridge so it doesn't go funny, I'm just going to put it in a jam jar with a bit of oil over the top um, and that will keep it fresh. So put this in. If you don't like feta, you could use goat's cheese. If you don't eat dairy, you could put some tuna in this. So crumble that in. There we go. Already starting to look much more exciting. I need to clean my hands, no problem. Um, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some garlic to our onions that we're cooking. So I'm just going to do a couple of cloves of garlic. And the way that I do garlic is chop, chop, squish. So those of you who've seen my videos before or been to my classes will have heard this. So you put your flat bit of garlic on the board, chop each end off, chop, chop, squish. And that forces air between the skin and the garlic so the skin comes right off. It's a bit of an ugly one. I'm going to chop that bit off. And a lot of people ask me, is it okay to use ready chopped garlic? And I just always say no, because I just think it doesn't taste like garlic. So you might as well just leave it out. And if you're gonna um, peel it like this, it makes it really easy. And if you've got garlicky hands and you don't like that, just find something stainless steel, like a pan or a sink or a tap, wet your hands and rub it and it gets rid of the garlic smell. So let me chop up my garlic. You can either slice it like this, or if you want to, you can crush it. And let me show you how to do that without using a garlic press. So you still slice it and then you get a pinch of salt, put it on top, and then you almost spread it like butter. And that salt acts as an abrasive and breaks the garlic down. There we go. So that's gonna go into our onions, which now I can smell smelling really lovely and sweet and delicious. Pop that over there. The reason I'm adding the garlic now is because garlic's got a much higher sugar content than onion, so it cooks a lot quicker, so it'll burn quicker. So I only add it for the last couple of minutes of cooking. So we've got in here, we've got our herbs, we've got our chickpeas, we've got our feta. I'm just going to put some lemon in. Now I put lemon in nearly everything and it adds brightness and it adds just joy and tartness to things, which balances out all the other flavours. 
So if you've got pretty much any recipe, if it's tasty, a bit flat at the end, I think most of us are used to putting salt and pepper in, but if you add some lemon or some vinegar, it brightens everything up. So lemon juice goes in and lemon zest. We're nearly there. Now, if you wanted to, you could put some chopped up tomatoes if you've got them or chopped up peppers. Um, a bit of grated carrots would work. Just gonna squeeze that. And these are definitely the best lemon squeezers. All the equipment that I use, by the way, you can get on my website. And then let me go grab my onions and garlic. So let me show you what you're after. Can you see how lovely and sweet and sticky they've got? So we're gonna scrape those in. So we've got the sweetness of the onion, we've got that tart sourness of the lemon, the saltiness of the feta, the earthiness of the chickpeas and the freshness of the herbs. We've got everything in there. I've made sure I've scraped all the oil from the onions in as well. Sorry, my oven's beeping. Um, because that's gonna act almost like a dressing, so we don't need to add any more oil. So that onion oil and the lemon combined makes a really nice dressing. And I'm just gonna put some chili in. Looks like I've stolen this from Pizza Land. I haven't. Pizza Land? God, is it 1980? Pizza Hut. There we go. Chili, you could use black pepper if you want to do chili. Fresh chili if you've got it would work. I'm gonna to toss it together. Now I think this is lovely, It'd be great with uh, like a lamb or a chicken kebab, great with some salmon or roast chicken if you're doing a barbecue. It hangs around well. Lovely, just in a pile on a plate with some toasted pita. I love to serve things on a flat plate rather than a bowl because it looks prettier and it's easier to get a bit of everything. But the most important thing I need to do before I serve it is taste it. And when I taste it, I'm tasting, does it need more lemon, more salt, more chili? This definitely needs a bit more lemon because the sweetness of the onion is overpowering it a bit and the lemon will cancel that out. I haven't added any salt because the fat is quite salty. And then that is that, let me pour it onto here. And like I say, this hangs around a while, it'll stay fine in the fridge. Definitely eat it at room temperature because things taste a bit flat when you eat them straight out of the fridge. And that is our chickpea salad with feta, lemon and herbs. There you go. If you'd like any other recipes, just head over to my website, You Say Tomato Cooking, or follow me on Instagram, where I'm Gemsy Wade. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or comments, just leave them and I'll help. Thank you.